Hello again and welcome back to another video. Today we're off to uh, Dresden in uh, East Germany. And the year is between 1964 and 1966. And we're going to go and visit our old friends at Ihagi. And this is one of the Ihagi range. Of course they're best known really for the Exacta range of cameras. This is a slightly I wouldn't say dumbed down, but it's missing some of the features of the, the Exacta cameras, such as the removable, interchangeable prism finder, for example. This is the uh, the EXA 2B. The Argy was founded in 1912 by a Dutch guy, and uh, following the war he moved back to the Netherlands, and he ended up setting up in West Germany, uh, Ihagi West, and I think I have covered an Ihagi West camera, which would be the uh, the Casina built FE2000. But this is a completely manual camera. It's very heavy. It's made out of metal. I think it's rather attractive. One of the nicest things about it is the uh, the contour, this curvature here, rather than being square like so many of these sort of cameras are, they're, they're kind of triangular in shape, whereas this one's much more sculpted, which makes it quite comfortable to hold quite firmly in your hands. It does have interchangeable lenses. It is a 35mm SLR, by the way, so it does have interchangeable lenses. This is coming with a, a Mayer, and Mayer, of course, were based in Gorlitz. And it's a very simple design. It's three lenses in three groups, or three elements in three groups, I should say. Zebra patterned lens. On the front, we can see it has the aperture ring. It goes from 2.8 down to 22. It doesn't really have half stops, but you can get it in, in the middle of them. Focusing scale from infinity, marked in both meet, meters and feet. And the closest focusing is about two and a half feet, 0.75 of a meter. And then we also have a depth of field scale underneath. And I would imagine that the red dot is for infrared film, so that's uh, that's quite interesting. Looking at the front, the bit that stands out most obvious is this weird contraption over here. Now I think I've shown some cameras before where we had the auto diaphragm. Prior to that, there was preset diaphragms on lenses. This is to stop the lens down. So when you push on this, this lens has got a sticky iris. You can see there's oil on there. It's in need of a bit of TLC. It doesn't really spring back open. But to remove the lens, which I'm going to be showing you why I'm taking it off in, here at the moment, you push this little catch in, twist it to the top, and off it comes. You'll notice this comes with a lens. So rather interestingly, when you push on this lever, this is what's closing the aperture or the diaphragm down, rather than having the more common pin at the bottom than does it. It's threaded, so you can use a cable release with this. But when you push it back, this is the actual shutter release here. So there is a lock on these cameras on the back here which stops the shutter from firing. So you can see there, when you push back, it will first stop the aperture down and then it will trigger the shutter. And when you release it, it should open back up to um, the widest setting again to give you the bright viewfinder. The reason for this camera and the thing that's so good about it is it has an instant return mirror. I've shown cameras in the past where once you press the shutter the mirror flies up but it stays up, it doesn't come back down until you advance the film. So this was a big improvement in that it had an instant return mirror. A variety of lenses available for the camera. I think they range from around about 20mm through to well over 200 I think. As well as extension tubes and um, macro bellows etc. All of those accessories are available. I have a flash connector here for the PC socket connection. That's about it for the front. On the bottom we have a release for the back, plus a tripod bush in the middle. 
On the back we have, like I say, a shutter lock here. So when this is in this position, the shutter is locked. I keep going to the top. <laughs> it's quite different. The shutter speeds open. The shutter releases over here on the left hand rather than the right hand. So that's your lock. You've obviously got your viewfinder. It does have a couple of focusing aids inside. It has a split image rangefinder surrounded by a micro prism ring. So that's fairly sort of standard. But um, this was optional, this screen. On the top we have the film advance. It's quite a short throw and quite a short lever. That also cocks the shutter at the same time. We have a film speed reminder tab down here. You can see this is set for 400. And we have a subtractive counter. So you'd set this for the size of the roll of film. And it would show you how many shots you've got left not how many shots you've taken and you have to manually reset this after you've changed and put a new film in for example I've got a push to rewind levers on the top here you can see this rather nice embossing on the top with the Hagi Dresden on it and very simply on this side you have a shutter speed dial so you can see we've got speeds from B half a second quarter of a second eighth 15 30 60th 125 and a top speed of 250 which considering the speeds of the films at that time was probably pretty normal and to adjust the shutter speeds you literally just turn this until it lines up with the uh, the black arrow there now the red dot is for using flash if you're using bulb flash you'd set it to the bulb setting which would give you a 15th and if you're using electronic flash you set it to next to the lightning bolt and that will set the shutter speed to a 30th which is quite slow for flash synchronization really to attach a lens you take the lens you'll notice on the top of it there's this little pin that goes in line with the red dot on the top and then you just got to turn the camera turn the lens until it locks and there you can see the action of this lever stop down trigger shutter and of course being an instant return mirror you can see straight through the viewfinder it does have a little red flag that pops up once you've taken the shot to remind you that the film needs to be advanced but there's no metering there's no batteries it's completely mechanical and it's made out of metal right so let's load this up with some film so if you take this thing here this will twist until it lines up with the black dot and then the whole back comes off this was still the era of removable backs on cameras rather than the swing open doors so there you can see the pressure plate and uh, there's a roller there for the transport of the film etc if we look inside we can see the shutter there you'll notice that it's actually a um, a vertical shutter cloth in this it travels upwards by the look of it so when you wind on it goes down and then it goes up film cartridge goes in this side it's a standard fold out to rewind crank on the top here so we just pull that out so the standard rewind crank film comes across here you'll notice this has got uh, metal sprocket real quality engineering and this is your take up spool and what you can do which is eh, not common but quite a few cameras have this feature you can remove this and you could put a empty film cassette in this side you want one of the ones like I I'll show you in a minute something like the reusable ones and then you can have it going from film canister across into another film canister advantage being if you open the back up pictures that you've taken will already be safely stored in the, uh, the canister on this side so you won't fog the film quite a neat idea and then this is the uh, the actual spiral that you can put in there just for normal usage where the film will be wound onto this and then you can rewind it in the uh, in the normal way if you come across one of these make sure it has this bit with it um, I think they're probably going to be worth less if they haven't got these and I bet these on their own people are probably going to ask silly money for 
also makes loading a bit easier. Um, you can um, take this off to aid with loading the film, which is the way I like to do it, because you know what I'm like with loading film. I always balls it up. So I have my trusty sample here. Maybe if I take this lens off, it might sit a bit easier. So remember to remove the lens, just push it down, twist it, lift it off. So your film cartridge, that just pops up into there. You'll notice there is a little shelf here, which is another interesting difference with this camera. It has a little shelf, so when you slide that in, it will sort of hold it in the right place, which is quite neat. And just make sure it's all the way up in there, and then we can pull the leader across, like so. And the green part of this goes at the bottom, and so we have to feed this leader. You can see mine's in a right state because it's been used so many times. And that has to feed into there. I'm trying to do this on the screen. So that sort of feeds into that piece of metal. And then you can start to wind this across. And then this will, he says if he can see it, will push up into there. And that should go all the way up. And that should attach to that sprocket drive. Make sure the sprockets are engaged. And then we can advance it a little bit. Like so, so we know that it's actually taking. Which it is. That will come back. So we make sure it's lined up with the sprockets. It's flat. This is incorrectly, so that's looking fine. And then we can attach the back. There's no foam to go rotten or anything in these cameras. They're just well engineered. Turn this back round again that way. And that's our film loaded. As you know, take up the slack on this side. Don't force it, but just take the slack up. And then you should see this turn as you advance the film. So there you go. Full stroke. And there you can see it going through. You can see our countdown. Counter is going down each time. Then to unload the film, just push down on this lever here. Fold out. This is when you've finished the film. You've taken your exposures. Push down on that and then it will very gently rewind. You don't need to hold that down on this camera. And you're listening for it coming off of the cassette on this side. There you go, it's come off the cassette on this side. Give it a couple more turns. Like so. Open the back up. Remove it. And there you see our film has been exposed, wound back into the cassette, ready for development. So quite a simple camera to use. So as for metering, it's going to be a case of Sunny 16 or um, a separate meter, handheld meter. A nice selenium meter as long as it's working will go well with this. And uh, maybe even an app on your phone would be a good solution. That just pushes up like so. Just turn that back round so that it's facing the, the back. And there you have it. That's the camera for today, folks. An XA 2B. Very nice. Quality engineering. Not particularly expensive. They're not overly rare. They're not overly sought after. The exactors are the ones that are really sought after more than these. But it's a beautiful piece of equipment when you think this is from the mid 1960s it's a fair age but yeah kind of recommended something different 
It is German, so it is quality. The lenses, are, well, the lenses are a bit of a Marmite issue. Some people think these are really, really good. Other people don't really rate them very much. I haven't actually shot this yet, so uh, I'll give you my opinion on that one. I've actually put a roll of film through it. But thank you for watching. Comments, questions and queries, etc. down below. A like and a subscription is always welcome. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Bye.